Hey all, Grezen here. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to get started as a sub rogue in Shadowlands Season 4. Season 4 just started, so things are about as even as it's going to get. So I thought it would be a good idea to put out a video for those of you who are just starting to get into rogue at this point in the expansion. So let's get started. Let's start off by going over the most common talent build used by sub rogues in arena and raided battlegrounds. In the first row, we're going to be taking a talent called Premeditation. So when you enter stealth, your next shadow strike is going to grant you up to 10 seconds of slice and dice. And if you already have slice and dice active, it's going to grant you two additional combo points on that shadow strike. Now this is a particularly good talent when it's paired with the Recuperator Conduit. We're going to be going over conduits in a little bit, so we'll go over a little bit more of that in detail later. In the second row, we're going to be taking a talent called Night Stalker. Now, Night Stalker is going to cause your Stealth and Shadow Dance to increase your movement speed by 20% and your damage by 12%. So during your Shadow Dances, you're going to be moving a lot faster and dealing a lot more damage. In the third row, we're going to be taking a talent called Marked for Death. Now, this ability has a 30-yard range, instant cast on a 30-second cooldown. Mark for Death is going to mark your enemy, and it's going to instantly generate 5 combo points. Now this is a very strong talent because you're going to want to pair this up with Kidney Shot or Eviscerate to either stun your target for 6 seconds or have a huge Eviscerate. It will also reset the cooldown of Mark for Death if you kill your target within 1 minute of using this ability. Now in the 4th row, or what I like to call the Safety Row, we're actually going to be taking Soothing Darkness. Now Soothing Darkness is going to cause you to heal for 3% of your maximum health every second while your Stealth or Shadow Dance is active. Now this is going to be great for while you're either resetting or going in and doing a go. Our next option is called Cheat Death. Now Cheat Death causes fatal attacks to instead reduce you to 7% of your maximum health for 3 seconds. You will be taking 85% reduced damage and cannot trigger that effect more than once per 6 minutes. This is a talent that you're going to want to take against particularly bursty compositions such as a Marksman Hunter or a Rogue Mage. Anything that has large amounts of burst that can kind of potentially one-shot you in a stun, this will save your life. And in addition to saving your life, this is going to give you the reaction time that you need to either your trinket and vanish or reset or what have you. The final option in this row is called elusiveness. And this is going to be something that you're probably going to want to take if you're playing with a healer. So this is going to cause your feint to actually reduce all damage taken by 30% in addition to the 40% damage reduction on AoE effects. This is an incredibly powerful talent for reducing all damage taken. In the 5th row, we're going to be taking a talent called Prey on the Weak. Now, Prey on the Weak causes your enemies that you stun with your Cheap Shot, Kidney Shot, or Disarm to take 10% additional damage from all sources. The reason we take this talent is because you're going to be trying to do all of your goes in a stun, so you're going to want 10% damage for you and your teammates to finish out those kills while your target is CC'd. Now, in the 6th row, we're going to be taking Enveloping Shadows. Now, Enveloping Shadows works with a passive that is already baked right into Sub Rogue called Deepening Shadows. And what these abilities do in Cohesion is going to reduce the cooldown of your Shadow Dance by 1.5 seconds per combo point spent. So this is going to allow you to reset your Shadow Dance cooldown while you're actually doing your go. And in addition to all of that, it's going to actually give you an extra stack of Shadow Dance. And in the final row, we're going to be taking Master of Shadows. Now, this is going to give you 25 energy over 3 seconds when you activate your Shadow Dance. This is going to pump you full of all the energy that you need to do your goes. Next up, we're going to be talking about PvP talents. Now, the first talent we're going to be taking is called Dismantle. Now, for a 25 energy cost on a 45 second cooldown in melee range, this is going to dismantle and disarm your target for 6 seconds. You're going to want to take this into any composition that has a big melee, such as a warrior or a death knight, or even another rival rogue. You can use this to stop your enemy's goes cleanly while you run away and reset. Now, if the enemy composition does not have any melee that you need to disarm, you can actually take a talent called Thick as Thieves. And this is a passive effect that causes your tricks of the trade to increase all damage of a friendly target by 15% for 6 seconds. After that, we're going to be taking a PvP talent called Shadowy Duel. Now, this is a 50 energy ability that on a 2 minute cooldown that's going to lock you and your target into a Shadowy Duel, removing both you and your enemy from the eyesight of everybody in the arena for 5 seconds. 
Now, Shadowy Duel is a very versatile ability. This is going to allow you to take kill targets into the Shadow Realm to land kills while the healer can't actually target their ally and heal them. The other use of this ability is actually to reset. You can use this ability to Shadowy Duel a healer, and you can run around the pillar and kind of reset, re-stealth, and get ready for your next kill attempt. In the third spot, we're going to be taking a talent called Smoke Bomb. Smoke Bomb is a two-minute cooldown that will create a line-of-sight cloud with an eight-yard radius. Now, enemy players who are outside of the Smoke Bomb will not be able to target their allies who are inside the Smoke Bomb. You can use this ability to create line-of-sight to kill a target, or you can use it to reset and re-stealth. Let's touch on Covenants. The best Covenant that you can pick is Kyrian. The first benefit of being Kyrian is Echoing Reprimand. Now, this is your Covenant ability that costs 10 energy on a 45 second cooldown. This is going to attack with your main hand weapon, dealing 110% of attack power, arcane damage to an enemy, and extracting their anima to anima charge a combo point for 45 seconds. Damaging finishing moves that consume the same number of combo points as your anima charge function as if they consumed 7 combo points. This ability will synergize very well with your resounding clarity unity power. It will anima charge 4 combo points, and when you use those blue combo points, it will deal damage as if you had consumed 7 combo points. This will give you large bursts of damage. Vial of Serenity, and this is going to be an on-use 3 minute cooldown that's going to restore 20% of your maximum health and remove all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds affecting your character. This also synergizes with the Vial of Patience node in your Soulbind tree with Pelagos. This will cause your Kyrian Vial to instead restore 55% of your maximum health over 10 seconds instead of instantly, but also removes all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleed effects affecting your character. That part doesn't go away. Alright, now let's talk about Conduits. First up in the Finesse tree, we're going to be taking Rushed Setup. This is going to cause the energy cost of your Kidney Shot, Cheap Shot, Sap, and Distract to be reduced by 44% when fully upgraded. Saving this amount of energy can be very important, especially when you want to do a go. Next up, we've got an Endurance Conduit slot, so we're going to be using Cloaked in Shadows. Entering Stealth is going to cloak you in the shadows, absorbing up to 27% of your maximum health in damage over 4 seconds. This can be used to vanish or re-stealth and save yourself from damage over time effects. For our first potency conduit slot, we're going to be taking Deeper Daggers. Deeper Daggers is going to cause your Eviscerate and your Black Powder to increase your shadow damage dealt by 17.6% for 8 seconds. This is important because it pairs very well with your Shadow Blades button, which causes your combo point generators to deal an additional 50% shadow damage. Here, we're going to be taking Recuperator. Recuperator allows your Slice and Dice to heal you for up to 39.6% of your maximum health over 36 seconds. And like we were talking about earlier, this pairs very well with the Premeditation talent that causes you to generate a free Slice and Dice on your Shadow Strikes. This provides you with a little bit of sustain that you might want to get through your games. Next up, we have another Potency slot, and we're going to be taking Planned Execution. Planned Execution makes your Symbols of Death grant you an additional 8.8% critical strike rating. This is great if you want to land more big eviscerate crits. Finally, we're going to be taking a finesse conduit called Quick Decisions. With this, your Shadow Step cooldown is going to be reduced by 10% and its maximum range is going to be increased by 36%. So this is going to allow you to Shadow Step more often and further. Now let's talk about Poisons. For our Lethal Poison, we're going to be taking Wound Poison. Now, Wound Poison coats your weapons with a Lethal Poison that lasts for one hour. Each strike is a 30% chance to poison your enemy, which instantly inflicts 93 nature damage and reduces all healing received by 8% for 12 seconds, stacking three times. For our non-lethal poison, we're going to be using Crippling Poison. Now, Crippling Poison is going to coat your weapons with a non-lethal poison that is going to last for one hour. Each strike has a 30% chance to poison the enemy, slowing their movement speed by 50% for 12 seconds. This also happens to pair very well with your Shiv ability, which is a 25 second cooldown 20 energy cost that is going to attack with your offhand weapon, dealing 1053 physical damage, dispelling all enrage effects, and applying a concentrated form of your crippling poison, which will slow by 70% instead of 50% for 5 seconds. Alright, now let's talk gearing. 
First up, we need a dagger in the main hand. The reason for this being is that Shadow Strike and Backstab, your combo point generators, require a dagger in your main hand to use. Now, interestingly enough, we're actually going to be using a slow fist weapon in our offhand. Now, there's a few different reasons for this. The first reason is because this is the only weapon that actually has versatility and mastery on it, and mastery is going to increase your finisher damage. The second reason being we want a slower, harder hitting weapon to hit harder, not more often, so that we can deal more damage on our burst goes. Next up, let's talk about trinkets. So first up, we're going to be taking the Gladiator's Medallion. This is going to give us 134 of our main stat and also going to allow us to remove any crowd control effects on our character. For your second trinket, you have a couple of options. The first one being the Badge of Ferocity. So this is going to give you 132 critical strike rating with a one minute cooldown on use to increase your primary stat, which for us is agility, by 354 for 15 seconds. This is going to give you those big juiced up goes to deal the most amount of damage possible in your shadow dances. The other best option is the Gladiator's Resonator, and this is going to give you 134 of your main stat and allow you to throw a Cosmic Resonator which explodes after 4 seconds, dealing 26,000 cosmic damage split between all nearby enemies on a 2 minute cooldown. This is really good to throw down on your stuns to deal massive amounts of damage in one quick go. Alright, now let's talk set bonuses. So our 2 set bonus is going to cause our Shadow Strike to have a 15% chance to grant Shadow Blades, which is our main go button, for 5 seconds. And our 4 set bonus is going to cause our finishing moves to have a 3% chance per combo point spent to cast Shadow Strike at up to 5 enemies within 15 yards. Both of these set bonuses can be very impactful in PvP. Most rogues will take their 4 set in the Helm slot, the Shoulder slot, the Gloves, and the pants. Now the reason we're going to put our tier set bonus pieces in these slots is actually because these are the slots that actually have versatility on them. Versatility is a very important stat as it's going to increase the damage you deal and cause you to take less damage overall. All right now let's go over some stats. First up we've got a very versatile stat called versatility and this is going to increase your damage and healing done by a 1 to 1 ratio so we've got 34.88% and it's also going to decrease all your damage taken by half of that amount. And next up we've got mastery executioner and this is also a 1 to 1 ratio that's going to increase the damage done by your finishing abilities by 75.6% because that's how much mastery we have. Thirdly I like to take a fair amount of critical strike because I like those big eviscerate crits. Because I run Badge in that planned execution conduit that we talked about earlier, I have a 22% chance to crit, plus the 8% from planned execution, which brings me up to a roughly 30% critical strike rating. Finally, let's talk about haste. So we actually don't want any haste like we talked about with the weapons earlier, because we want to make sure we're hitting hard, not often. Alright, now let's talk legendaries. First up, we're going to be taking Unity on our belt. And as the stats, we're going to pick Versatility and Mastery to boost up those numbers once again with a Mastery Gem. This is going to give us the Resounding Clarity effect, which causes our Echoing Reprimand to now Anima Charge 4 combo points instead of just 1. And then for our main Legendary, we're going to be taking Finality on the chest. And once again, we're going to choose Versatility and Mastery for our stats. This Legendary will cause our Eviscerate, Rupture, and Black Powder to increase the damage of our next use of the same ability by 25%. So say we use Eviscerate, our next Eviscerate is going to deal 25% additional damage. This is how we're going to be landing those 20k plus Eviscerates. Your Rotation and Goes. So first up, you're going to want to throw your Mark for Death and Kidney Shot to stun your target for 6 seconds. Then you're going to be popping your Shadow Dance and your Badge. After that, you need to hit your Shadow Blades button and then Symbols of Death into Echoing Reprimand. After that, all you need to do is just spam Shadow Strike and Eviscerate and then re-cheap shot your enemy when Kidney Shot fades. Your second go is going to be very very similar to the first one, however this time, we're going to Mark for Death into the Kidney Shot, Shadow Dance, and hit Resonator, and then we're going to go into our Symbols of Death, Echoing Reprimand, and then our Shadow Strike and Eviscerate. We're going to be using our Gladiator's Resonator to replace the Shadow Blades button that we used in our first go to get a nice little burst of damage on our second go. Let's go over some macros. The first macro we're going to talk about is our Stealth Macro. So this is going to be a macro that's going to be very useful for getting a re-stealth because of Shadow Dance. Now Shadow Dance doesn't actually allow you to go back into Stealth. So what this macro actually does is it cancels the aura 
for your Shadow Dance when you are out of combat stops your attack so you don't break your own stealth and will put you safely in stealth. Next up, let's go over the Stop Attack Sap Macro. So this is a macro that's going to help you find other people who are in stealth and sap them out. So when you spam this macro, it's going to spam your sap button and drop your current target and sap the closest target. So whenever someone comes into your range in stealth and you see them, it will immediately sap them out of stealth and you're good. Now, in addition to this, you're going to want an actual sap button also on your bar because keep in mind, this sap macro will always sap the closest target. So if there's somebody on the other side of the closest person that you want to sap, you're going to want to use that regular sap button. Now we've got the Shadow Dance macro, and this is going to use your Shadow Dance Tricks of the Trade with the Thickest Thieves talent that we talked about earlier, and it's also going to use your Badge of Ferocity if you are using one. This is going to save you a couple of button clicks for something that you would be pressing anyway, and you'll get it all done in one button press. Now we've got a Symbols of Death and Echoing Reprimand macro, so we're going to be using the tooltip for our Symbols of Death, casting our Symbols of Death, and then we're going to use any of our Covenant abilities that we might be, but in this case, we are Kyrian, so we're going to be macroing Echoing Reprimand into it. Now at the end of it, we've got the Fire Eater's Vile Toy, and that's not really necessary, it's just something that has a little bit of extra flair to add to the macro. Once again, this is just going to save you a couple of extra clicks of things that you'll be pressing anyway. Step Kick Macro. Now this is a cast sequence macro that will target your focus, shadow step to that target, and then immediately use your kick to interrupt their spell cast. When using this macro, be sure to set a focus at the start of the game and make sure you can land your step kicks to land kill opportunities. Let's go over some compositions typically played by Sub Rogue. RMP is a very strong composition because of the amount of crowd control that it has. You can simultaneously crowd control all three enemy players to land huge kill opportunities. Next up, we've got a comp called Thug Cleave, which is Rogue, Hunter, Healer. Thug Cleave is very strong because of the ability to land freezing traps off of your saps or sap and freezing trap to opposite targets while dealing huge burst goes into your kill target. Lastly, we've got Scooby Doo Cleave. Scooby Doo Cleave is Retribution Paladin, Rogue, and Healer. Ret Rogue, Raggy. Scooby Doo Cleave features large bursts of damage, solid off healing, and plenty of utility. All right, now let's go over a couple of examples of gameplay. So in this game, we're playing a little bit of Rogue Mage with my friend DJ. So we're going to go in and we're going to try and get the sap here, but the, the priest does manage to get in combat with a Mind Seer. So I'm going to cheap shot the priest here so my mage can actually polymorph or Ring of Frost the priest while we're going to open up on the rogue. So I trinket quickly and do my first go on the rogue and try and do as much damage as possible. So we've managed to force out his cheat death and his cloak of shadows to be able to open up a kill opportunity on the rogue later on. So now we have to try and reset, get a little bit of cooldowns, and then wait to get our kill again. So now we have the rogue's trinket, so now we need to try and get the priest trinket, because once we have the priest trinket, then we can kill the rogue freely. So right now we're running around trying to keep the priest in combat so I don't get sapped. Although I do drop combat here and do get sapped for briefly for a moment, which is actually fine because we get the rogue back out and then I manage to cheap shot the priest, which is going to allow my mage to polymorph him. We're going to go immediately on the rogue with the resonator go, smoke bomb over. So even if the priest trinkets, the rogue will still die, even though DJ does manage to land the resheep on the priest once again to CC him for the rest of the duration of the game. Now in this example, we're going to be going against a Resto Druid Havoc Demon Hunter playing the same composition. So we're going to try and kill the Demon Hunter this game. He is going to be the primary target. So right now, all we're doing is we're waiting for Scenarian Ward to fall off so he doesn't get healed through our burst damage. DJ is going to pre-Dragon's Breath him, ring around with Ring of Frost, and then we're going to Smoke Bomb and Kidney Shot in there to guarantee that the Demon Hunter will have to Trinket. After that, the druid will open with a stun and run away and not allow himself to get CC'd. So now we have the Demon Hunter's Trinket, and once again, we need to try and get that druid's Trinket so we can kill the Demon Hunter friendly after. As the druid runs up, I'm going to cheap shot him to allow my mage to sheep him. And then I'm going to run up to the Demon Hunter and land that kidney shot, and we're going to do as much damage as possible, forcing the druid to Trinket. So now we've got both of those trinkets, and now we win on the next go. So now, once again, we're running around trying to reset, not take damage, and not die until that opportunity arises. So I'm going to trade out my Vanish immediately to save as many cooldowns as possible, such as Evasion, such as my Kyrian Vile. 
and now we're just kind of waiting for the right opportunity to get the CC onto the Druid to kill the Demon Hunter. The Druid smartly actually flesh crafts, so he's immune to CC. So I keep him out of restealth by hitting him in combat, and then send the blind. They've got no trinkets. We're going to kidney shot the Demon Hunter and unload our last burst of damage with Combust onto the Demon Hunter and land the kill. Thank you for checking out my Shadowlands Sub Rogue Quick Start Guide. Hopefully this information was useful to you. If so, make sure you guys leave a comment or a like on the video. And thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.